for them, Isaiah was the leader of the pack and they followed along. They enjoyed him. He riled them up. He settled them down. He was everything for them. He was the one in charge of them. He was not just their big brother. He was like their parent. All that was taken away from them. woke up that morning, it was a Saturday morning, a typical Saturday morning, we woke up and after I get up, I just kind of go through and check on everybody and, and Isaiah was gone and the kids said that he had gone out the window. We woke up and the window was open and he was gone, so um, a couple hours later we went outside. We just started thinking, oh, he's coming back. We went inside for a couple minutes, we ate lunch and police officer comes to the door and I actually thought it was him. I was like, I was getting happy, but then it was the police officer telling us what happened. And he uh, asked if I had a picture of Isaiah. He asked if Isaiah had a bicycle. I found a picture and showed it to him and he showed me the picture that he had on his phone. And of course it was a picture of a young man who was in the hospital and he was on life support and unfortunately it was Isaiah. At that point when we got in the car, like I knew what happened, my mom told us and me and Quentin were sitting in the back seat of the police, police car thinking, oh, he's gonna be okay. Like we were kind of like rolling with the situation, but then when we got there, we saw him with all the tubes and everything and we just didn't, I, I didn't think like that anymore. I started thinking seriously. When I got there, this lady walked me through the halls to wherever my, everybody was. And there's like a circle of preachers and my brothers and my mom and my family were there. And while they were praying, I secretly whispered and Quincy said, what happened? He said, I got hit by a car. I wasn't really worried because I thought he was gonna be fine, but. The doctors came and explained to us what happened. He was uh, trying to cross I-20, got hit by a car, and while he was on the pavement, he went into cardiac arrest, and the, um, the fireman um, gave him um, chest compressions, and they brought him back. He was on life support, but he had swelling in his brain, and they ran uh, tests to determine um, the likelihood that it would go down or whether he would get better and it was determined that he wasn't going to make it. They were just kind of quiet. It, it was almost like you could see the light going out in their eyes. They were really reserved. Um, they, I could tell that they knew what had taken place, but they were still just expecting Isaiah to open the door and come back in. And I guess in a way I was too. So we were all kind of walking around numb and just going through the motions of everything. One of the social workers at Cook's gave me a brochure and talked to me about the camp and explained to me the kinds of things that they do at the camp. And aside from all the activities, I was really interested in the counseling part of it because the component of it for me that would help them would be the component where the other kids come in and the other kids uh, have, have lost like they did so that they can see they're not the only ones. We got there, we said goodbye, and we started. I started trying to make friends with all my cabin buddies, and we did as soon as we, as soon as we got there. So, went to our cabins. We got uh, all of our stuff set up, and throughout the week, everything. Yeah, it got easier and easier. I started to give up on myself, but then with all the motivation from everyone in the crowd, I started 
pulling myself back up. And then it gave me the confidence to do the catwalk, which I was completely scared to do. <laughs> There were some kids in there that had the same exact loss as me, so that kind of showed me that I'm not the only one that this has happened to. And since I knew what it was like, it was easier for me to share like my experience about it to them and for them to tell them tell me about their experiences. I could feel like all the emotions just coming out, and because I normally would would wouldn't show anyone my emotions, I wouldn't cry, I wouldn't do any of that, but it actually helped me. During group, we each got our own rock, and it was to symbolize something about our loved ones. So, yeah, Isaiah really loved football, so I painted a football and I wrote his name on it, and I colored it blue because his favorite color is blue. And I felt very comfortable with the situation. Like, I feel like I could talk to anyone about it because I've already spoken my feelings to a lot of other people. Oh my goodness, when I picked them up, um, I, just the look on their faces told me that I made the right decision. They were very excited. They all started talking to me at one time, so I'm trying to hear the experiences that one had over the experiences that the other one had. They had such a great time. And so that let me know that camp was the very thing that they needed at the very time that they needed it. I don't think they would be in nearly as happy a place as they are. They get excited about everything. And to think that if they had missed the opportunity for camp, I don't know if I would be able on my own to deal with the kinds of emotions that they have because of a loss. And again, their brother was their world. And I can assure you that without the opportunity uh, of the, the campership, they would not have been able to go. Camp has been such a wonderful blessing for our, our family. I will tell the people who donate that they are a blessing to the families and that the kids who participate because of them, they grow into role models. They grow into um, kids who have bright futures as opposed to kids who are struggling and living in grief and the camp offers them that opportunity. <laughs>